In 25 minutes, Ukraine erased a decade of Russian radar defenses carried without a single pilot in the sky. Picture this, 0 to 47 hours local time, the Black Sea, pitch black. Aboard a Russian patrol boat, a radar operator stares at his screen, his coffee forgotten. What he's seeing is impossible. Five contacts, small, low, fast. Ukrainian FPV drones heading straight for the heart of Crimea's most protected, most heavily defended airspace. This should have been a suicide mission. What happened in the next 13 minutes wouldn't just be a military strike, it would be a systematic, brutal exposure of a fatal flaw in Russia's entire multi-billion dollar defense system. A flaw so fundamental, it would render their most advanced weapons utterly useless. Welcome to Behind the Fame. Today, we're not just breaking down a battle, we're dissecting a blueprint for how ingenuity can dismantle a giant. This is the story of how a drone costing less than an iPhone brought the Russian war machine to its knees. Suddenly, the darkness over the Crimean coast explodes with light. Five missiles streak out, desperate, angry. 30 million rubles of precision Russian weaponry fired in a panic, but these weren't the targets Russia had trained for. These weren't slow-moving cruise missiles or high-altitude jets. They were something new, something the system's computer brain had never been programmed to see. As the smoke cleared, the Russian operators saw something that, according to their manuals, shouldn't exist. The drone was still flying, completely untouched. Now, inside Crayon airspace, these FPV drones had one goal in mind, take out the Russian defenses surrounding Mount Ari. But first, they had to survive something no one thought possible. On the beach below, a Russian Pantsir S-1 air defense system, their premier point defense weapon, designed to shred cruise missiles and protect their most important sites, swiveled its radar dish frantically. This wasn't some leftover Soviet junk. This was the best they had, and it had just burned through 30 million rubles without hitting a target that cost a fraction of that. As the drones continued their relentless advance, Mount Apatry filled their thermal displays. Those distinctive domes, crowning its summit like giant golf balls, housing radars worth hundreds of millions. The Panzer fired again, this time switching to its 30 millimeter cannons. Tracers painted beautiful, useless patterns across the pre-dawn darkness. The rounds weren't even close, and here's why. The Russian operator had a problem he didn't understand. He was facing a ghost. You see, the Ukrainian drone was flying perpendicular to his radar beam at exactly 50 meters altitude. This specific maneuver created something called a Doppler notch. Here's the breakdown. Radars don't just see objects. They measure how fast something is moving toward or away from them. That speed is called radial velocity. If a drone flies sideways across the radar beam, its radial velocity drops to almost zero. To the radar's computer, a target with zero radial velocity looks exactly like stationary ground clutter, a building, a hill. So, to avoid tracking every tree and rock, the system is programmed to filter these targets out. It was literally designed to ignore the threat. Even worse, physics was playing a cruel trick. Radar waves bouncing off the calm sea created ghost images below each real drone. The Pantsir's tracking computer, confused, tried to average the real target with its reflection, sending its expensive missiles to the empty air between them. Those missiles had proximity fuses designed to detonate near something the size of a car door, needing half a square meter of radar return. These tiny drones gave back a hundredth of that. The missiles literally didn't recognize them as valid targets. They flew right past, their advanced brains dismissing the drone as meaningless static. As the Panzer operator was figuring out why his $15 million system was now an expensive paperweight, more drones appeared on his thermal feed, converging from different vectors like a swarm of mechanical wasps. The math was now working against him. The Panzer had detected them at two kilometers, but its missiles needed 1.5 kilometers just to arm their warheads. With a closure rate of 40 meters per second, that gave him just 12 seconds from first detection to watching them fly past. 
12 seconds to engage targets his multi-million dollar system wasn't designed to see. Radio chatter exploded across Russian frequencies, controllers demanding fighter support. The Panzer operator reporting multiple contacts unable to engage, someone yelling, screaming about missiles that wouldn't track. These weren't the tomahawks they'd trained for. These were toys moving at highway speeds, and somehow that made them invisible. Before we reveal how this attack ends, if you're fascinated by how seemingly invincible systems are brought down by clever, unexpected strategies, you're in the right place. Behind the Fame is all about deconstructing the blueprints of success and failure. Don't miss a single breakdown. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an expose on how the game is really played. At 0250 hours, the lead drone adjusted course slightly, lining up on the first dome structure. Inside those protective shells sat the 96 L6E radar. NATO calls it cheeseboard. This wasn't just any radar. It provided the targeting data for the entire S-400 system surrounding the mountain. It could track 100 targets simultaneously. Without it, the feared S-400s were blind. The dome itself was designed to survive 2,000-pound bombs from 30,000 feet. But nobody had considered what would happen when the attack came from a consumer-grade drone at treetop height. The shaped charge detonated. A jet of molten copper, moving at 8 kilometers per second, punched through the delicate antenna array. Millions of dollars of sophisticated electronics turned to smoking scrap in the time it takes to blink. But the Russian response was already in the air. An Su-30 fighter, Russia's answer to the F-15, dove through the pre-dawn darkness. It was equipped with a BARS radar that could supposedly track a golf ball in space. It would soon prove it couldn't see what was right in front of it. The pilot's screen showed contacts that appeared and vanished like fireflies. His system needed five consecutive radar returns to confirm a target. But these drones kept dropping below the noise floor, the baseline level of background radio static, after just two or three. The computer kept starting over, never establishing a track file. Frustrated, the pilot fired anyway. An R-73 heat-seeking missile worth 20 million rubles, dropped from the wing and accelerated to Mach 2.5. Designed to chase jet fighters, it raced toward the drone, and then veered off as if it had remembered an appointment elsewhere. The problem? Temperature. The R-73 hunts for jet engines burning at 1,000 degrees Celsius. These electric drone motors ran at maybe 50 degrees Celsius, barely warmer than a laptop. The infrared seeker was practically blind to it. The pilot grew desperate, firing a second, then a third, then a fourth missile. The thermal camera on a drone caught one passing so close, the blast shook the camera. Still no hit. 80 million rubles of ordnance, gone. Nothing to show for it. He had one last option, the GSH-30 cannon. He opened up, spraying 30 millimeter rounds at 1,500 per minute but none connected. Why? His fire control computer calculated perfect lead angles based on linear prediction, assuming the target would keep flying straight. But these drones shifted randomly left or right every couple of seconds. By the time the rounds traveled a kilometer, that small two meter jink had become a 10 meter miss. The computer was solving the previous second's problem while the drones were already creating new ones. Out of missiles and low on fuel, the Su-30 pilot pulled away, reporting his failure. But his radar now showed something that made no sense. New contacts weren't coming from Ukraine. They were materializing 10 kilometers off the coast, like ghosts rising from the sea itself. The Russians had missed the master stroke. While they were focused on the drones already in the air, they failed to see the delivery system right under their noses. 10 kilometers off the coast, unmanned Ukrainian USVS, essentially drone boats, sat on the water. They had been there for two hours, completely invisible. The secret wasn't stealth technology, it was simple geometry. The massive Podlet K-1 radar on Mount Etri could see aircraft at 300 kilometers. But sitting at 3,600 feet elevation, 
with a minimum depression angle of minus two degrees, basic trigonometry carved a massive blind spot in its coverage. It physically couldn't see anything below 43 meters altitude within 10 kilometers of the shore. These boats, cruising at five meters, weren't evading detection. They were sailing through a blind zone the size of a small city that physics had built for them. And this is the real genius. How were they controlling these drones dozens of kilometers from shore? With this system, Ukraine doesn't fly drones directly from Odessa. The Earth's curve would break the signal. Instead, they use these USVS as relay boats, floating cell towers. An operator in an office in Odessa sends commands through an encrypted Starlink link to the boat. The boat then beams those commands to the drones nearby. The drone's video feed comes back the same way. This means Ukraine only needs a few of these relay boats to cover the entire Crimean coast. They were flying combat missions, controlling everything through what was essentially a floating Wi-Fi extender. They were drinking coffee while orchestrating one of the most devastating attacks of the war. By 0257 hours, the cascade of failure accelerated. The second wave of drones, launched from the invisible boats, swarmed the mountain. The Nebo radar dome, Russia's crown jewel for detecting stealth aircraft, was next. Its VHF array, now exposed, took direct hits. The shape charges didn't just make holes. They created plasma channels that sent power surges racing through its circuits, frying everything in microseconds. The Podlyot K-1, the radar that watched the low-altitude approaches, was silenced. Years of radar coverage vanished in seconds. Without these eyes, the entire Russian air defense network shattered. The S-400 batteries became expensive lawn ornaments. They needed the Nebo for early warning and the Podlyot for low altitude tracking. Without them, their operators could only sit and watch. The command bunker, the brain of the entire Western Crimean air defense, took the final hit. The shape charge turned its reinforced door into modern art. Fire erupted from within, consuming servers, cables, and classified documents. Secondary explosions tore through the interior. Whatever command capability existed, there was gone forever. By 0302 hours, the Russians' whole world on that mountaintop had gone dark. The attack was over. A multi-billion dollar integrated air defense network designed to fend off NATO had been systematically dismantled by a swarm of cheap drones and a few invisible boats. We started with a single, impossible blip on a radar screen. A $500 drone versus a multi-billion dollar system. This wasn't just a military defeat for Russia, it was a paradigm shift, a blueprint. It proved that the most advanced technology can be defeated not by superior tech, but by superior strategy. It proved that understanding your enemy's system, its physics, its software, its blind spots, is more powerful than any missile. The Ukrainians didn't outfight the Panzer, they outthought it. They didn't destroy the Su-30, they made it irrelevant. The real story here isn't about the destruction, it's about the deception. The fatal flaw exposed wasn't in the hardware, but in the mindset. The Russian system was built to fight the last war, a war of big, expensive, recognizable assets. The future, as we saw that night, belongs to the small, the smart, the adaptable, and the utterly unpredictable. This has been behind the fame. We've exposed how a simple drone exploited the fatal flaws in a modern superpower's defense. They didn't just succeed in their mission, they proved that sometimes the greatest weakness of a giant isn't its size, but its inability to see what's coming for it. The revolution in military affairs isn't coming. It's already here, and it's flying at 50 meters just below the radar.